Can one be a trader and an investor at the same time? I view myself as a long-term investor, uh, but when you see people making a killing in trading, uh, the fear of missing out kicks in. Be careful of that. And I say with love my heart, brother. Uh, FOMO is deadly. FOMO standing for fear of missing out uh, when it comes to investing, yeah. So what, what I love to look at, and, and I showed you a video earlier about the finance and accounting track of my MBA degree program. Whenever I look at investments, I look at FVT in this order. F is fundamentals. V is valuation, T is technicals. And I do look at technical analysis and I do teach about it because it is helpful when deciding when to buy a stock or add to an existing long-term position or when to trim some profits. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I've, I've done a heck of a lot of trading in my days. But what I do find is that in, in a portfolio in a given year, um, most of your, most of the profits come from one or two positions and all the other silly trading is kind of a rounding error. And whenever you try to invest in companies just to make five, 10 or 15%, it's so hard through trading because um, we get fooled by randomness. You know, markets go up and down for things out of our control, like geopolitical events or saber rattling between say, I don't know, DC uh, and Beijing uh, or Moscow and Riyadh when it comes to the price of oil, et cetera. So just be really, really careful with that. Yeah, think long-term, I promise you it helps a lot. I promise you, yeah. And this is not a normalized market. And it worries me that a lot of people are quitting their jobs and becoming traders. Please tell me, anybody in this webcast, the name of a successful trader, what are their names? We don't know because they don't exist in the long run. They don't. It's hard. And this is not a normalized market. I mean, having 6% inflation and the Federal Reserve keeping rates um, unchanged is not normal. It's not normal. It's because of COVID too, because they have no idea uh, what the next version of COVID is going to do to the economy. And so they're thinking that Federal Reserve and, and central banks all over the world. Well, if we leave rates at zero, yeah, inflation is bad. But if we raise rates too early, it could crush the economy. And we have no idea about the next variants uh, when it comes to, to COVID. Yeah. yeah. Just be careful. Yeah. yeah. Now, in terms of calling market peaks and market troughs, it, it's impossible. And I remember years ago, I worked at a, the largest tech hedge fund called um, Pequot. And uh, um, the, the guy that runs it is, is a, a brilliant man, nice guy, God bless me, just passed away, named Art Sandberg. And I remember back in 2006, I was pitching uh, a, sh a short to him, my, my team and I were, and it wasn't a tech stock, it was in the home building industry. Uh, we were talking about going short Lennar, ticker LEN, and KBH Homes, ticker KBH. And our thesis was, well, there's a, private equity bubble and also uh, the real estate market is overheated in 06 or 07. And he, and, and he said, what's your thesis? And our thesis at the time was, well, they're overvalued. And so we wanted to short them. And so he said to us very nicely, God bless him. He said, son, I've been around long enough to know never to stand in the way of insanity. You know, markets peak, markets trough. You just can't time it though. You can't time it. Yeah. And that's why I like to be very, very long-term focused when it comes to buying stocks. Yeah.